Hi everyone, uh, in this particular video, we are going to discuss solvent effects as they apply to acidity or how they might explain the acid strengths of some compounds. Now, <clears throat> these are not invoked generally, but there are certain cases in which the solvent might play a crucial role in explaining the acidity of compounds. Okay, so uh, let's think about uh, two acids here and I'm going to use the text uh, an example uh, from the textbook so we have third butanol uh, versus ethanol and uh, the pKa's for these two compounds they're around 18 and 16. And so what you notice is there's a difference about two pKa units uh, between these two. They're both alcohols, but there's a difference of about two pKa units. Now, uh, now you might, uh, again, I want to emphasize that, you know, this two pKa unit is actually a huge difference because when we convert that into Ka units, we're talking about 10 to the power minus 18 and 10 to the power minus 16, which means there's about a hundred times difference between the two numbers here, okay? So one of the acids or one of the compounds here is about a hundred times more acidic than the other compound. And the question is, why would this be? And so again, uh, the answer must be uh, the stability of the conjugate base. So let's go ahead and draw the conjugate base for each of these compounds. And we get this ion here, which is a tert butoxide. And for the other one, we will get ethoxide. Okay, this is called an ethoxide ion. Okay, so for some reason, based on these pKa numbers, what we know is that the ethoxide is more stable than the third butoxide, okay? But if you look at it, they both have the negative charge on the oxygen atom. Uh, now, sometimes uh, you could bring in uh, an inductive effect uh, argument here, uh, whereby carbon-containing groups are known to be electron donating. So you could say that, okay, there is one carbon containing group connected to this carbon, which is connected to the oxygen. So there's some electron push going in from there. Uh, so this is uh, opposite to the inductive effect of the halogens, which are electron withdrawing. This is an electron donating effect, okay? So the carbon containing groups, they can donate electrons. But in this particular case, there, there are three carbon containing groups connected to that carbon. And so more electron density gets pushed towards that oxygen atom. Uh, that is one way you could explain this. But a better explanation is actually the solvent effect. Okay. And this has to do with the stabilization of this O minus. Okay. Because in the other case with the inductive effects, we are saying that electron density gets donated to that oxygen, so it becomes more unstable. So if it is more unstable, then it would like to accept the proton, which means it is less acidic. Or since this is less stable, this would be, uh, so, sorry, this is unstable. Okay, this is unstable or less stable. Yes, so that means this would be uh, less acidic and this is more stable so that is relatively more or less unstable so that would be more acidic right that's the argument there uh, sort of uh, a weird argument actually but with the solvent effects what we can say is that when you have two ions okay and the key here is uh, a difference in steric bulk okay steric bulk uh, so steric basically equates to bulk, okay, or steric hindrance, steric bulk. And what we're trying to say here is for this particular 
conjugate base, you have a C with O minus, and then you have three carbons around it, each with hydrogens on it. That's what this ion is, if I draw the Lewis structure. Whereas for the other ion, for the other ion, we have oxygen with a minus. This carbon has two hydrogens, and then it has a CH3 on it. So there is a difference in the bulkiness of these two groups, okay? This is less bulky. This is less bulky and what that means is when these ions are in solvents okay so imagine like a polar solvent uh, so when we say a polar solvent uh, this is some solvent which has a dipole in it okay and i'm just going to draw uh, it like this. That is an example of like a polar solvent, just to say that there are some dipoles in this molecule. So this ion here, the oxygen is negatively charged. And when you have a polar solvent, since the oxygen is negatively charged, you will have the solvent come and arrange around it so that the positive end of the dipole in the solvent is trying to uh, stabilize this negative charge on that oxygen atom. Okay, and you could imagine like several molecules come and then just arrange. Now they're not basic; they're not canceling out that negative charge. They're basically coming and stabilizing that negative charge. There's a negative charge on the oxygen. The solvent arranges around that oxygen such that all the positive ends of its dipole point towards that oxygen atom. So that oxygen would feel stabilized. Now in case of this bulky base, okay, and now notice how I've drawn that hydrogen. I've drawn it sort of weird. I think I should be drawing it here and here so that I can actually incorporate another one if I wanted to. But because this is bulky, that means a lot of area around it is like covered. What that means is not as many uh, or as many solvent molecules. Now, I think my picture here is sort of corrupted that it would allow too many groups to come and arrange around it. So I'm going to redraw this so that I can show the bulk. Okay. And so now you can see that because of the bulk, what's going to happen is not as many molecules, solvent molecules, can come and arrange around this oxygen atom. So this oxygen feels less stabilized for that reason. So the solvent can affect the stability of the conjugate base just by uh, 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 just by arranging around that uh, conjugate base. And so if this conjugate base is more stable, okay, this is stabilized by solvent, whereas this is not as much, okay? This is also stabilized, but not as much. But the fact that this is more stabilized by the solvent, that means that this is the more acidic alcohol. So we can, uh, the more acidic compound. So we can explain acidity based on solvent effects also. Uh, now it is really hard to predict this, you know, so if nothing else works, then maybe solvent effects are at play. So this is sort of a tricky situation here. And uh, based on research, what people have found is that the solvent effects better explain the stability differences uh, between, these, uh, between these sets of conjugate bases, okay? So I hope that's helpful, bye.